Hi everyone and welcome to the Business Events Podcast, a podcast that hosts interviews and discussion panels with experts from the business events industry and academia. I am Monica Martins and today my co-host Xavier Villares and I will interview Simon Burton, event industry entrepreneur, author of the Event Professionals Handbook and founder of the Virtual Events Institute. Uh, welcome, uh, Simon, and thank you for joining us today for this edition of the Business Events Podcast. Can you start by please letting us know a bit about your background? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to be here. So the first thing I should say is I'm a co-founder of the Virtual Events Institute, and I'm okay. a co-author of the event. <laughs> so uh, I guess one of the important things to understand about my career in events is that it has been full of partnerships, collaborations and cooperations with people. So I'm an event industry entrepreneur. What I think is interesting about my career and my interest in the current uh, situation we're all facing is I've been an advocate for tech and social media as important tools in the event landscape throughout that time. So I've launched and sold trade shows, I've launched and sold some awards programs, consulted to a, a number of big organizations in the industry. I'm a passionate believer in the power of life. That's great, thank you so much. And why did you found or co-found co the Virtual Events Institute? Where did it start? How did it start? Well, it, it started as many of the best entrepreneurial and event ideas do. It was a serendipitous conversation for people mm -hmm. who shared a view of what the opportunity was during the pandemic and who believed that event professionals needed to reskill that the skills event professionals have are important and that the future of events is golden but that this was a moment a heidelberg moment if you will a moment where the world was going to not evolve there wasn't going to be evolution there was revolution and what we needed to to understand that revolution was know how and know who. Who do we need to work with and how do we need to work with them? And a way of re redefining and reappraising our old, old skill sets for a digital world. Okay, that's great. And where, where are your clients based? Well, we have members rather than clients and people who are training with us. And one of the things that's most important to understand about the Virtual Events Institute is that we are completely global. So we have people taking the certification on every continent all around the world at all sorts of, and in all sorts of different event environments. I talk about, uh, about us being anti-denominal. We're, we're not a particular religion about a particular type of events. We believe that trade shows and conferences and meetings and sports events and music events and festivals, these are, these are all important and the new skill set needed is applicable to all of them. Okay, uh, that's that's great. It, that that that's really good. Like the, this way of to understanding this um, in this global way. And it, one of the good things that we have with the with the virtual events is is is, is that thing precisely that we can go uh, uh, be here and, and there and, and and collaborate and and, and so on. But uh, we are really concerned uh, about how the professionals feel within the sector regarding. Um, uh, if you consider that both local and, and the UK government have been giving adequate support to the professionals and companies in our industry, because well, at the end of the day, even when your clients are based all around the world, uh, you are based there. So, so yeah, please, if you can let us know how, how do you feel about this and how has been this this time during the during the last last year? Sure. So the first thing I'd like to say is that I think the industry trade associations and the industry media have been spectacular. I am full of admiration and, and, and support for the way they have behaved and represented the industry at this time of crisis. I think as a, as a group of people, we've come together as a community and those associations and media who've needed to lobby on our behalf have been fantastic. But government has been falling. It has uh, failed to recognize the importance of what we do economically. It's failed to recognize the importance of what we do in terms of the community. And 
really important it's failed to recognize the number of freelancers and entrepreneurs who make the event industry tick who make things happen who have been completely abandoned by its behavior if you want creativity if you want ingenuity if you want invention then you need you need an industry that's full of entrepreneurs and freelancers and people who are flexible about how they work and how they behave and none of those people have been supported by by government in any shape or form and all of that said it's our industry that built the nightingale hospitals that's helped create testing centers that's been we we've demonstrated all of the skills you expect from a, a modern industry and we've not been recognized appropriately by government and i think it's shameful yes yes it is indeed and and and, and really hard uh, during this during these times i think um and how has your organization been supporting uh, professionals in our sector during this during this month during this last year sure so we've done a we've done some very specific things and some general things obviously the virtual events institute is about training it is about upskilling it is about making sure that you as an event professional are set with the skills and you need to organize events online and physically in, in the future post pandemic but we recognize some people are in very difficult circumstances so we have special discounted rates for students for freelancers and for those people who are open to work so we've created uh, ways in which that reskilling can happen in a very cost effective manner for those people for whom uh, funds are tight right now. We've also uh, worked with other organizations, uh, people like um, New Model Army, who've wanted to help reskill. So we've collaborated with them and with the World Indigenous Forum to help give those skills to indigenous people around the world. Everyone needs to make their events work in this new in this new landscape and we want to play our part in supporting the event industry to come back stronger okay okay and um, so um this kind of online and hybrid events i mean um it's not something new at all but uh during the last year it was like a really an amazing boost it's like a boom because it's necessary but in your opinion Regarding the impact that this uh, will have in the sector and and in the uh, in every destinations, uh, how do you see the, the the future from now? Do you think that the people is considering uh, the the these hybrid events and online in a different manner from now? I mean, absolutely. The 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 dam has broken. The the world has changed, and and the consequences of that are frankly impossible to predict but but i'll make some i'll make some guesses my guess is that some very traditional events will come back exactly as they were but with a bit more digital other new events will emerge which are new formats and i mean physical formats here but we'll experiment with new formats and those new events will have much, much more digital woven into them. The tech will be considered an integral part of the event rather than a bolt on. And I think you will also see uh, new events in new sectors, in new formats emerging online. I think we're at the start of the journey. The most important thing is if you had a physical event and a physical community, you can't simply photocopy it. You can't simply, it, 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 you can't simply process and clone it. You need to understand where the emotional and intellectual heart of that event were and recreate those moments of engagement of the heart and mind. And they will be things that we're only just starting to discover. So it's a hugely exciting time, but I don't think we know exactly what the future looks like. We just know it's going to be full of new, new formats, new ideas, new markets, both digitally and online. It's interesting because I think that many many people has been trying, have been maybe trying to make a copy paste of the live events and trying to make it online, and something is not working. <laughs> something it's out of the of the place, and and it's because I mean these kind of things, isn't it? Yeah, it's also because the, one of the great things about live events is serendipity, or chance, or moment, or or opportunity. Those things are much much more difficult to recreate online. That said, 
access to content, access to great speakers, being able to just attend the sessions I want, being able to re record the content and see it later. These are all amazing things that online does better than live. I think we make a real mistake if we assume that tomorrow will look like yesterday, but just a bit more digital. It won't, it, it will look different. Mm -hmm. And speaking of uh, live events, uh, what is your forecast? Do you believe that we will still will be able to host on-site events this year? Or what do you think about how it's going to be the, the evolution uh, through this 2021? Wow, well, I think it depends what your geography is. I mean, clearly in China, there are events happening again already. And to some extent in um in places like Dubai and Singapore, you're seeing something of the return to, to events. Um, I think it's difficult to predict. Uh, and every time in the last year we have predicted, we've got it wrong. We've always, we've always assumed it's going to happen quicker. I, I would like to hope with the uh, arrival of the vaccine and post the current lockdown that's going on through uh, most of the world, that we will see uh, some return to events in the summer, perhaps not a big scale and perhaps not, perhaps quite locally constrained, but we'll see a return to events and face-to-face -face engagement in the summer. And that by the autumn, you'll see that real flurry of activity coming back on screen. Don't forget, events take planning. And so you need to be confident that your event can take place in order for you to plan it properly. So you need a certain, certain lead time for it to be realistic. All right, it's my, my turn now then <laughs> to ask a question. So uh, we, we, you were speaking about new skills that, that uh, event professionals need. I think that in my case, for example, I've been working in the events industry for 16 years now, always organizing on-site events, on-site academic conferences in different parts of the world, which was like easy for me. If you, even if I was based in Edinburgh, I could just organize a conference in Italy because then I would travel there to like the weeks before to get everything ready. Uh, but and when I started my master's degree, which was, it was in uh, January last year, um, everything was, yeah, we, we were not still knowing what was going to happen with COVID. So every, I, we still hosted an on-site on event in March and then the pandemic hit and I had to cancel most of, of it. So, uh, and obviously that then gets you like, oh my God, what, what, what am I going to do now? How am I going to make changes when I'm just like a, a small, very small, um, I have a very small structure to do this and I'm like now studying and I really love this these, uh, uh, industry, but what, what would you say like to student, students who are like now finishing their, their degrees, their undergraduates or masters or whatever? Uh, um, what, what, do you have any advice for them in terms of reskilling as you were, were saying? Well, I guess the first thing I'd say is I'm sorry. It, it must be <laughs> great. And, and um, you, you have my sympathy. <laughs> Thanks. The, the, the second thing I think I would have said to students that I've encountered from event management courses historically, so, so I don't think this bit has changed significantly, but there is a huge difference between the theory and the academic way of viewing events and the practical reality of how you deliver an event. Because and I don't mean to go back to what we were talking about earlier, necessarily about the process. Oddly, in this particular frame we're talking about now, I mean the soft skill. How do I persuade someone to do something? How do I engage with a speaker or a sponsor? Or how do I get someone to give me something that, that, that a little bit more, or help me out here? Or any one of those things. Look, there's some, there are some soft business skills and interpersonal skills that aren't, aren't the purview of an event management course. And uh, so, so if I was advising a student now, I would advise them to think about those things. Where can you learn those soft skills? Where can you learn some presentation skills? Uh, make sure your LinkedIn profile is as polished as anything. Make sure that you read the industry magazines. Make sure that you're 
attending any free webinar about practical uh, practical matters because you're now in the real world and in the real world what matters isn't your exam but pound notes and dollar signs and euros and it's got to be about how what you do helps an organization deliver on its objectives most of those objectives will be commercial not always but but most of them will be commercial so you've got to understand that translation you've got to understand it really quickly and the second thing is that i think the elements of the process that you've learned as a student around marketing and identifying a, a market and managing speakers and being very disciplined about how you organize the event are now even more valuable because those skills are really important when you're organizing a virtual event. You, because the soft skills I was just talking about around speaker management or problem solving don't work so well in the digital world because I can't, I can't, I can't manage a speaker who's running a bit late or is a bit nervous or has made a mistake on stage in the same way that I can at a real event. Everything is much more like TV, much more like live TV. So the production quality needs to be higher and your processes need to be higher. And I think if you're a, a well-disciplined event management student, that's a huge opportunity. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, that's that's important uh, to know. And uh, how how do you see the future? You spoke about this a bit before. How how do you see the future of the business events industry in general when we manage to control this pandemic? Th there is something that I well control. Well, let's see. When we manage to get back on events, on site events too, uh, there is something that sometimes comes to my head, which I, I think like will the, there be more jobs in the industry do you think because there's new skills needed because if we have like hybrid events we need people to get on with the with the virtual side and then you will need people on site for for the events too how, how do you see this what's your opinion that's, that's a really important question i think as well for those people who are um who are looking for work at the moment or or students either people who've been in the industry a long time is that when this comes back it will come back and and the jobs aren't just with organizers they're with venues they're in hospitality they're with suppliers they're with uh, all of the ancillary services the event industry isn't just the people who come up with the idea of the event it's in all of the people who help create that event this is a team effort and, and those jobs are going to come back and i think monica you're correct you will see that in some ways more staff needed for some events than were historically needed and to to return to a previous idea i think you'll see more events but I, I, I think you will just see more events i think to, to perhaps answer the, the question in a different way i don't think we will see mega events coming back very quickly i think they huge international events are going to take some time to come back into the cycle and in the interim, to the personal view, I think you will see more regional and national events that are smaller and more focused with um, uh, more support around them to ensure that interaction and content delivers what the exhibitors and sponsors and the delegates and the audiences want. And I think you'll see a great deal more planning about how to make sure those coming together is happening effectively. So, so, so I think we are in a moment of extreme pain right now. I think in the future, the event industry will continue to be a significant employer and present significant opportunities because people have an innate need to meet, whether it's online or around a campfire face to face. We have to get together. It's what makes us, what makes us human. And that's not going to go away. Yes, absolutely. I agree. And now that I see a, a guitar behind you, and there is something that Xavi and I are very passionate about. We are very passionate about music and live music. We miss like a lot going to festivals and to. Lots of people have said to me the thing they miss most is live music. Yes, it's like incredible how, how I miss that. Not only about the music, but about like again human contact and. How, how do you see that too? I'm adding here another question because this is something that I think it's of interest for us all. Like, w will we also be able to start going back to, to concerts in 
October or like in autumn or something? Do you think? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a scientist. That's not fair. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think so. Um, I, I think live entertainment and sport are really good examples. And they are, they're extreme examples of why sometimes digital content can't deliver the absolute pinnacle of the experience. Mm -hmm. Actually, for many people, they can. Yeah, for many people, going to the match or going to the festival, it's too far, it's just, it's too cold, the food's terrible, I mean, whatever it might be. What I think we've done is redefined what, what I'm allowed to define as the perfect experience for me as the all okay. Um So I think we'll see, the live music will come back. I think everything will come back. I think when, when we start to see that damn burst for live, but, but we'll see a huge outpouring. But I think people will be very, very demanding about quality, what they get. Mm -hmm. Very demanding about the quality. And I don't, I need to be very clear about this, I don't mean that the entertainment has to be the best. I mean, my experience has to be authentic and what I want. Mm -hmm. so, so I think you'll see this huge return to live events, huge enthusiasm for it. But I think you'll see every individual person being very selective about what they like, what they want and how they want to consume it. I think you'll see this reversal. So personalization of my needs as an audience member is going to be very high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's something probably that, that will change too. It's like how the audience expects to experience an event, whatever type it is. I suppose that people will... Yes, but what they, what, the point I'm trying to make, Monica, is that audiences aren't homogenous. Mm -hmm. you know, there's there, there's 50,000 people at a football game. But, but, but every single one of them wants a different experience and they are going to be... Now, some of those experiences overlap. We all want our team to win. We all want the beer to be cold. We all want whatever. But, but I want my experience to suit me and you want your experience to suit you, even if we're sitting next to one another. In, mm -hmm. And that, I think, is where we'll, why we'll see a huge boom in the number of events because people will say hey that's okay but it's only six out of ten for me it might be it might be ten out of ten for you but it's only six out of ten for me over there is an event that's ten out of ten for me and i'm going to go to that one i'm, I'm not going to go to the six out of ten anymore mm -hmm. all right very very good thank you so much and how can people who are listening to us um find find you and get in contact with you I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, at Simon Burton on Twitter. Um, and most importantly, through the Virtual Events Institute website, virtualeventsinstitute.com. All right, thank you so much. We will add that information to the description of the podcast too when mm -hmm. it's uploaded. Okay, and we have as well, uh, like a last question, uh, as well talking about music, that is one of the main topics in, 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 in our lives. <laughs> Um, so we're asking our guests about a particular song or maybe a singer to share with us. You know, that song that helps you to get ahead with all uh, this situation in the darkest winter days, you know, that song to elevate the mood. And if you, if you will have to recommend a song, Simon, which one would be? Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you the song that I've listened to perhaps the most on the lockdown. Is that okay? Does that qualify? Absolutely. So my, my lockdown song has been uh, by Thin Lizzy. Um, and the song is called, I Have Got To Give It Up. And it's just, uh, it's very, I love it, it's a great song, it works for me. Okay, 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 that's a good one. Okay, okay, we will, we will share it as well in our, in our social media, yes. so. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Simon, for this interview and for this time. Uh, we were really, we have really, really enjoyed and, and, and we want to really yeah, thank absolutely. you for this. Thank you so much. Have <laughs> And thank you, and thank you, Monica, as well. It was our pleasure uh, once again, as always. <laughs> and thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Business Events Podcast. Uh, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at the Business Events Podcast. 
You can find us as well on Spotify and Deezer now. <laughs> Please get in touch if you would like to be a guest as well in our podcast. Our email is info.thebusinessevenspodcast.com. And uh, thank you. Have a lovely day. I've got to give it up. I've got to give it up.